Today we are looking at chemical monitoring and management and our first topic is monitoring and managing chemical reaction. In this topic we will look at the roles of chemists and also what are the different industries that employ our chemists. So first of all let's look at what the chemist does for us. So a chemist provides us with understanding of the earth's chemical environment. So there are very different kinds of chemicals in the land and in the atmosphere. So they look at how they interact with each other and how the chemicals interact with us. The chemist also helps us to manage our use of resources. For example, fossil fuels are running out. Now we need to know how to use our resources in a very, very, very efficient way. And this will be actually, uh, and this uh, chemist can actually help us with that. Now let's look at our industry. The chemical industry converts raw materials such as metal ores, atmospheric gases, plant and animal materials into very useful products such as aluminium cans that we use in our soft drinks, car batteries we use to drive our cars, fertilizers that, we use, that farmers use to grow crops and woolen clothes that we, are, that we wear every day. Now let's look at the different kind of industries in which chemistry plays a very important role. First of all we have the inorganic chemical synthesis, organic chemical synthesis, petrochemical, pharmaceutical, plastics, mineral, food processing and textile industry. Now all these industries use chemistry and as you will see they provide us with very very different products. Now let's look at each of these industries in, in depth. So first of all, we have the inorganic chemical synthesis. Now what do they do for us? They actually manufacture ammonia that we use um, as disinfectants to clean our floors and ovens. Then we have sulfuric acid, which you would uh, probably use in a school laboratory. Also hydrochloric acid. Then we have sodium hydroxide, chlorine, fertilizers, and explosives. So as you can see, these chemicals are pro provided by our inorganic chemical synthesis industry. So what does our organic chemical synth synthesis industry do for us? They provide us with solvents, soaps that we use to wash our hands for example, detergents, dyes, benzene, vinyl chloride, styrene and also pesticides and herbicides which we and farmers would use to control our pests. So you can already see that both of these industries provide very very different kind of products. So the petrochemical industry provides us with LNG, petrol which is a very very important oil that we use in our car, LPG, kerosene and also other types of oil. So the petrochemical industry mainly mainly expert, uh, expertise in providing different types of oils. Now let's look at the pharmaceutical industry as the name suggests and we would already know the pharmaceutical industry manufactures drugs, medicines such as Panadol. So when you're sick or in pain, you would, um, you would take Panadol and where does it come from? It comes from a pharmaceutical industry. Then we have cosmetics and toiletries as well. Now all these things would actually be stored or packaged in plastics. Now, as you, can, as you will see in the next slide, that plastics are also made by our plastic industry which also involves chemistry. So plastic industry manufactures polyethylene, PVC, polypropylene, Teflon, polystyrene, PET and nylon. So as you can see the plastic industry mainly focuses on things to do with plastics and petrochemical uh, products. Now let's look at our mineral industry. So our mineral industry is a bit different from all the other industries that we have already looked at. So they are involved in manufacturing, uh, in purification of minerals such as alumina, nickel ores, mineral sands and they also help us to extract mineral metals such as iron, gold, aluminum, copper and zinc. Now as you know these are very common metals that we use every day. For example gold is used in our jewelry, Aluminium is used to make pans for cooking. Copper is used as copper wires to conduct electricity. So again, you can see that every single industry produces very different different kind of products. Now let's look at the food processing industry. As the name suggests, the food processing industry actually helps us to produce very very different kinds of fruit, food such as soft drink and cake mixes. So now you'll be probably wondering how does soft drinks or cake mixes involve any sort of chemistry. 
Soft drinks are actually made using carbon dioxide, which helps the amount of fizziness. So we don't want too much carbon dioxide that will make us sick. And we also don't want too less carbon dioxide that would make the um, soft drink less fizzy. And with cake mixers, we want to know how much sodium bicarbonate uh, should be used in the product. Let's look at the textile industry. So the textile industry actually helps us uh, with the treatment of natural and synthetic fibers. So this means that they actually manufacture the fibers that helps us to um, make our different kinds of clothes for the fashion industry. So we have already looked at a very different range of industries and we can see that each of the industries are involved in uh, providing very different kinds of products and therefore the chemists that will work there also, uh, um, also have very different kind of roles. Now let's look at some questions to test your knowledge. So our first question is, our company is developing improved textiles for the fashion industry. Which of the following scientists would be most likely to employ? So let's look at the different kinds of scientists that the question has provided us with. So first of all, we can look at a geologist. So what does a geologist do? A geologist studies rock and the history of the earth, and therefore he would have no idea about textile or synthetic fibers, so he cannot help the fashion industry, so B is not our answer. Then let's look at an organic chemist. An organic chemist actually looks at compounds that involve carbon and also helps in manufacturing drugs. Again, he does not have anything to do with the textile for the fashion industry. Therefore, he can't help us to improve our fashion industry as well. Now let's look at a medical doctor. As you would all know, a medical doctor helps us to treat diseases or injuries. So when you're in pain or you're suffering from any sort of illness, you would actually go to a medical doctor. So therefore, he would not be able to help the fashion industry as well. So our answer is a polymer chemist. So let's look at what a polymer chemist do. A polymer chemist helps us to manufacture synthetic fibers. So therefore, he would be able to provide different kinds of clothes and also therefore uh, he would be able to improve textile for the fashion industry. So as you can see, a polymer chemist would be the right person that you would want to employ to produce uh, improved textile for our fashion industry. Now let's look at question two. Question two asks us which of the following sets include any only occupations which require chemical knowledge. Now let's look at the different type of scientists they have uh, provided us with in our options. So um, quite, uh, A tells us the meteorologists, oceanologists and climatologists. Now all these people need knowledge about the different states of water and also the effects of various chemicals in our environment. Therefore they need to know and need to have chemical knowledge. Now let's look at space and spacecraft scientists. Now these people need to know about body functions and also about production of oxygen and removal of carbon dioxide. You will probably be wondering why, because astronauts that are traveling in our rockets do not have supply of oxygen like we do. Therefore, these scientists actually need to look at um, how to provide oxygen to these um, astronauts and also how to efficiently remove carbon dioxide in the process. Now let's look at a nutrition and dietitian and medical doctor. So these people are involved with our health. Therefore, they need to know the chemicals that are involved in our body and also what sort of chemicals we intake and how they influence on different parts of our body. So therefore, they again need the chemical knowledge. And so our answer is D because you need all of these people uh, to, uh, you, all of these people require chemical knowledge because um, they need to know how chemistry is involved with each part of their tasks. And therefore, our answer is D. And you can also see from this question how important chemistry is in our world because all these people are from very different areas and again, they all need the chemical knowledge. Now let's look at question three. Question three asks us, what kinds of tasks are involved in the mineral industry? So if we can go back and remember, the mineral industry is um, involved in purification of minerals such as nickel ores and they also helps us to extract minerals such as iron, zinc, gold and copper that we use every day. For example, coppers are used in electrical wires to conduct electricity. So as you can see from this topic that there are very different industries that provide us very, with very different um, 
uh, products and each of these um, industries would employ uh, chemists with um, expertise in certain areas. Thank you.